Okay, so July is over, which means we need to talk about the books that I read in the month of July. It was the month that I moved, so I wasn't able to read quite as much as I normally do, but nonetheless, I read some pretty great books. So I'm excited to talk about them. In the month of July, I finished four books. I guess we could really say like three and a half because this is a powerless novella that is short and sweet, but really good nonetheless. So yeah, these are the books I read. I read Powerless, Reckless, Powerful, and Haunting Adeline. So we're going to talk about all of them today and genuinely loved almost all of them. There was one I wasn't too crazy about, but I'll give all the details on that. Okay. As always, please be sure to follow me on Goodreads. I will put the link to my profile below. I review every single book that I read. I really give my honest thoughts and opinions. I am not super overly critical of authors and books unless it was just like genuinely bad. But if you enjoy the same style of books as I do, whether it be fantasy, romancy, romance, dark romance, that's my bread and butter and that's a lot of what I read. So if you're into that same kind of genre, then go ahead and give me a follow, see what I'm reading, keep up with what I want to read, and obviously tune into these videos because every single month I'm going to tell you all about the books that I read. So let's get started. So I did this on purpose. Powerless has obviously been out for a while. It became extremely popular on TikTok on the internet. I wait, I waited to read it though, because I knew Reckless was coming out in July and I wanted, I didn't want to read it and then have to like go back and try to remember what I read. I just, I wanted to wait and read it till right before Reckless was about to come out so that I could just go boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I really, really enjoyed this book. It is fantasy through and through. I really, really enjoyed it. My only like really big complaint about this book, I guess, is that it's definitely YA, like there's no spice in it. And while like I don't need spice, a really good fantasy book can be a really good fantasy book on its own. And obviously there is like a romantic element to it, but I just really feel like this story would have been significantly better with even like a little bit of spice. We didn't have to go like full on like four chili pepper, five chili pepper spice. Like give me one or two chili peppers. Just like give, give me something. I mean, it was like full on. I, I just, I wanted it so badly. One, because I just think Kai is like so hot. <laughs> I really, really wanted that from this book. But nonetheless, I think that the entire plot of this book is really interesting and kind of unique. It's obviously the whole enemies to lovers kind of, but it's definitely like the hunter and hunted kind of trope. And I really, really like that. Um, I really, really think that Pei is a very strong female lead and I genuinely enjoy when we have a really strong, off the bat, really strong female lead in a fantasy book. A lot of times in fantasy books, like females will come into themselves and really like figure themselves out and like find their strength. But Pei is kind of badass off the start. So I really, really enjoyed Powerless. It's not my favorite fantasy I've ever read. It's not like my favorite series I've ever read, but I do think it's a really good, especially if you're starting to get into fantasy or if you just want like a little bit of a lighter fantasy read, this is a really, really good one. It's not like super intense world building. It's not, you know, nine books long series. Like there's two and a half books in this series and it's really, really good. I really enjoyed the first one. Okay. So then there's this little powerful. This is a powerless novella. And I just thought that this was such a good, like breath of fresh air, mini read, especially if you were one of the people that actually like read powerless when it first came out and were waiting on reckless to come out. I really, this was like such a good in between book. I was really sad when I was reading powerless and I didn't get more of Adina because I thought she was such an interesting character. And I thought that there was definitely more to her. I also really, I really love the male lead in this book, Mac, and I really hope there we didn't get a crossover or we didn't get him like wove into the story in Reckless, but I really hope that at some point in time, Mac comes back into the picture. I feel like he could be such a strong addition to this entire storyline because he was so good in this book. And I really hope that we get him at some point 
throughout this series. But nonetheless, this was a really sweet, like pure romance, really. This was like a purely romantic story. Again, zero spice, but really sweet nonetheless. Great read, quick read, 10 out of 10 recommend. Okay, and then we get to Reckless. This was a highly anticipated for release for me in 2024. I was really, really looking forward to this book. It's exactly what, like I said, it's why I waited to read Powerless and Powerful. I wanted to be able to read it through and really get attached and like be super into this trilogy. Uh, this book just did not do it for me. I was bored, I'm gonna say. I. I, it, it's, it's not that it's a bad book. I just wanted so much more. Again, I think that the lack of spice in this book, not that I need spice in every single book, but I really feel like this series would be elevated on a whole other level if we got that spicy aspect to it because you would just be so attached and so in love with these characters. And I do feel like that takes away from everything that this story could have. I also feel like the enemies to lovers arc just went on really long in this book. I, I just, I love an enemies to the lovers arc as much as the next girl. Tension does it for me all day long. I can read a long tension book and love it. But this just didn't, hit in that same way. I didn't feel like, uh, you know what I mean? Like it just didn't, it didn't pack a punch for me. And I will say that this book is also really not a fantasy book. Powerless is definitely a fantasy book. There's magic, there's powers, there's all of that. This is more so an action book, which I love as well. I love an action book, but I was just expecting a little more flair from this book, I guess. I was expecting a little more, like, I'm obsessed with these characters from this book. I just was really disappointed. I'm not going to lie. It took me a little while to read this. I kept like powerless. I consumed that book. I think I read that book in like a day and a half. This book though, I think it took me like three or four days. I just really wasn't like super excited to read it. I, like I said, I was just, I was a little bored, I guess is the way to put it. Spoiler alert. So please skip ahead if you haven't read this and don't want to talk about the ending or, you know, what's to come in the trilogy, but spoiler alert. Okay, let's talk about the ending. While I think that the ending to this book was phenomenal and really does get me really excited for the final book in this trilogy, I think the final book has a lot of potential and I think she can go really, really hard on that final book and I hope she does. Like I hope she really delivers in this final book. But I have a bone to pick with the whole Kit and Kai relationship. I, I wrote this in my Goodreads review for both books I find it incredibly, incredibly strange how Kit and Kai handle pay, like their relationship as brothers, but then also they both obviously have feelings for this girl, but they don't speak about it. And I find it really strange how it's written and it's a little aggravating to me because I guess I just don't think it's realistic at all. I don't know. like. In the first book, they were obviously both very into her and they just didn't really speak about it. It was just like this constant, maybe like underlying tension between them. And then in this book, the way that it ends with, with Kai and Pei walking in and obviously having had all this time together and Kit like alludes to a conversation with Kai, which is really just one question. Is there anything more I should know about? And like, while Kai knows what he's saying, like what is Kai supposed to say in that moment? Like it, it's, there's the lack of communication about their feelings for Pei is strange to me. And I do think that the ending of this book with Kit proposing to her and obviously there's a reason behind that. I think that Kit is trying to potentially maybe save her in some way, shape or form. And I don't know if he's doing it for Kai or if he's doing it for himself. I, I don't know. And I think that's part of what I'm so excited for in book three is just to kind of understand like what is going on with this little love triangle. I don't like, I don't totally understand it. And I'm hoping that it really all comes together in book three, but I definitely find it like, wildly strange how they like don't communicate about this girl that they both have very strong feelings for and Kai's in love with her 
obviously. And I just, it's, it's strange, but I'm hoping that it all comes together in book three. I just, this was a really lackluster read for me. I'm not going to lie. I think I just put up a lot of anticipation on it and it just didn't, didn't hit for me the way I wanted it to. Having said that though, after reading, I mean, I was on a fantasy wave. I think I had read like I don't know, like seven or eight fantasy series. And my friend kept screaming at me that I need to get into dark romance. I need to give it a try. She thought I would love it. She thought I would love the spice. She thought I would love the dark side. She thought that I would just really, really enjoy it. So I have officially taken a dive into the dark romance genre. This is the first dark romance I have ever read. And y'all, <laughs> this series it's two books haunting and hunting adeline this is the first one. Oh my god i have never read anything like this and i loved this book so much like i didn't i, I knew that i was gonna like dark romance because it's just right up my alley with the things that i'm interested in and the things that i like to watch on tv and read in books like i knew i was gonna love it but this is crazy i will say like major 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 trigger warning major trigger warnings they she spells it out in the beginning of the book trigger 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 warning if you are sensitive to any of the topics that she lays out in the beginning of this book like be prepared i'm not gonna lie to you it is dark it's very very dark but it is so good one okay i love smut i absolutely love smut but I don't enjoy books that are just purely smut. I really like a very strong plot line, very strong characters. I like to fall in love with the story and I think smut is just a great icing on the cake to really just get you addicted and like you can't put it down. And that is what she does so well in this series. I am so in love with Zayd, it is insane. It is so crazy to me how much I love Zayd and I think Adeline is such an interesting female lead and this book is just, it's incredible. It's incredibly dark, like I said, there are some scenes that are just, I mean, I was reading it and I was literally like, oh my God, like oh, <laughs> how did she write that? Like how do you put that into words and put it in a book? Like it is, there are some scenes that are off the wall but it's phenomenal. The storyline, and if you haven't read this, spoiler alert, okay? If you haven't read this and you don't want it spoiled, like, go ahead and skip ahead. The entire plot line about human sex trafficking and rape and, like, what really goes on in that entire world, while it is incredibly hard to stomach for some people and I can understand where this series would be way too much for people to read. It is dark. I think that this series highlights a topic that people feel very uncomfortable talking about and it's just a little hard to have the reality of it like smack you in the face and this book is so real and so raw and I think it just sheds light on a topic that is pretty gruesome and should probably be talked about more but is a very uncomfortable topic to talk about and the way that she writes this book i mean you just become so in love with the characters but also there's such a push and pull like you want to love zade so much but he's also incredibly screwed up and like does some really screwed up stuff but he found his perfect match and it's just like the, the evolution of the romance in this book and the plot line in this book and I just, I absolutely love this. So if you were looking for an entrance into dark romance, this was the first one I read and I was addicted. So yes, I am already two books in to August and I can't wait to talk about those as well. But July was a slow reading month for me. Like I said, moving, getting to Austin, all of that fun stuff. So I didn't read as much as normal, but I'm starting to throw back some pages for August and I'm excited to talk to you about some of the books that I've read in that month. So please be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned in for all of my book reviews as well as everything else that I discuss on this channel. All things things, life, hobbies, and things that I love. So thank you so much for being here. Please be sure to drop me a comment, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you back next time.